So this morning I want to begin talking about feelings. Um, some of us are comfortable talking about feelings. Some of us are not. I know every time I talk to Daniel, he always wants to talk about his feet. Not really, okay? We, we joke about that because, and you know, this sounds like a sexist thing, but, but seriously, oftentimes as guys, you know, we, we don't want to talk about our feelings, you know? And maybe, you know, you, you like talking about your feelings. Feelings are so important because of this. Oftentimes, the decisions that we make are led by our feelings. Now, if we don't like that, or if we're around people that don't like that, what we will then try to do is come up with logical reasons for what we're doing, but in reality, we're being led by our feelings. I can be led by my feelings, and I can go to the Word of God, and I can find a way to make it say what I feel. So how do we overcome that? Well, here's, here's one thing that we do. Whenever we're having feelings, we want to probe that. We don't just want to talk about it, or we don't just want to ignore it. We want to say, whoa, wait, what, what, what's going on here? You know? For instance, I might get angry, okay? I, I, I might be angry. Well, I, I don't want to just go with that anger. Why am I angry right now? Well, sometimes I find it's because I, I'm actually fearful. Now, as a guy, I, I don't want to talk about that. I don't, I, you know, I don't fear anything. No, I do. Sometimes I'm fearful, and because I get fearful, I get angry. So I want to probe that, and I want to go to, well, why am, I, why am I fearful right now? I want to take that before the Lord, and the Lord can be trusted with those things. And the reason, again, that this is so important, because if I'm just following my feelings, I'm not probing them, I'm not finding out, what happens is I make my decisions based on that, and I get led away from the truth. Scripture in Proverbs says, guard your heart above all else. Some of your translations will say mind. And what that's talking about there is that inside of me, if you've received Jesus, you've been given a new heart. But even though you've been given a new heart, you, you also have a flesh. And so Paul talks about this battle inside of ourselves, you know, even if you want to serve God and you've got this desire to serve God, you've also got these other desires that are all about death and destruction. At least that's where they, they lead you. So how do I decipher what's, what's going on? Well, one of the things that I've got to have is the Word of God. I've got to have the Word of God. I've got to constantly be pouring that, that into me, okay? Because the Word of God is going to help me navigate my feelings. You know, is this feeling that I'm having, you know, first of all, why am I having it and so on? Is it coming out of the flesh? Is this something of the Spirit? Is it a mixture? You know, maybe God's leading me in the Spirit, but I've also got the flesh starting to, to come into this. I always want to go to the Word. Now here's the other part, though, that we're going to be talking about a little bit, is that I've also got to block out all of these other messages that I'm getting. Because in our culture right now, we have all these other messages coming at us, and they are really hard to resist. They begin to shape our minds, even if initially we're, we're against them. You know, in my lifetime, just turn uh, 49 here, I've seen in our culture this massive change, massive change. And I know I talk about some of these things over and over because they, they are what, what's really, what we're really battling now. You know, for instance, the church, we talk about sexual immorality, okay? When I was young, even though those things were happening, they were not spoken of in a positive light. They were spoken of as sin. But now in my short lifetime, our culture has reversed and now sexual immorality is talked about in a good way and to talk against it, you are made out to be evil. Scripture talks about in the last days, good will be called evil, evil will be called good. We are in that time. We're in that time. Uh, you know, I talked to earlier about, you know, these churches hanging out there, um, you know, pride flags and, and that kind of thing. The scripture is, is unequivocal in this. Our, 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 uh, our life group just went through this. Romans 1. 
Romans 1 tells us exactly where this came from. Romans 1 says people turned from God, even though it was obvious um, that, that, that he was there. They, they, they turned from him, and it says that seeking to be wise, they become fools. And then what happens is it says he turns them over to unnatural and shameful desires, and then he starts talking about the sexual immorality, homosexuality, that, that it, there's all around us. It makes it perfectly clear where it comes from then why would you have a church embracing that? Because of this. What happens is we start following our feelings, and guess what? The information that we take in shapes our feelings. So if I'm constantly taking in information that is pointing me this direction, this direction, even though initially I'm like, no way, I will never do that. I will never think that way. It eventually, I've seen it in my own heart. I mean, it is powerful. And if I'm not taking in the Word of God, if I'm not getting before the Lord, what begins to happen is that it begins to, to overtake. Uh, we, we've got a church right here in, in Sessor that has left its original denomination, the First United Methodist Church, for those of you who don't know. They have left that denomination. Why? Because they embraced, that denomination embraced homosexuality. It just embraced it. And so that pastor there has led them to break off, and they're changing their sign, and I think it's going to be like, you know, it's part of the global Methodist Church. But this is very much all a part of us, and it affects every one of us. How do we stand against this? We don't go along with our feelings. The scripture we're going to look at this morning is in the book of Isaiah. It's going to be in chapter 8. And I want to give you a little background before I go there. First of all, Isaiah was a prophet. And Isaiah spoke in a time just like what we live in. Here's why I say that. Isaiah lived in Jerusalem. And there were two kingdoms right there where he was at. There was the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom, Israel and Judah. Originally they were one, but they, they, they then divided. And what you find in those kingdoms is in the northern kingdom, which was Israel, they had absolutely just turned from God as a whole. There were people there that loved God, but as a whole, the culture completely turned against God and they started worshiping idols and, and all kinds of other things. Judah, on the other hand, they followed God and they had this mixture going on where they were mixing in other things with following God. Sometimes you had a leader that led them towards God. Sometimes you had a leader that led them absolutely away from God. So they had this, this mixture going on. Now in the midst of all this, um, there were people that loved God. This is the time period where we find ourselves, okay? Because originally they were a nation that absolutely followed God. But what happened was they turned away from God. This is where we find ourselves, okay? We live in a culture that is, is what we would call post-Christian, okay? At one time, even though not everybody followed God, overall, that's what they did. That is gone. That is absolutely gone. We now live in a time period where overall people are moving against God. Now, some of them, you know, there's kind of, I, I see two kingdoms also in our culture. You have those that are just absolutely turned against God. And then you have those kind of have this mixture where, you know, they bring in some of the principles of God, but they're not really following God. And we're in the middle of this. How do we follow God in the middle of this? Well, Isaiah has some really good words for us because God was speaking through him, speaking to the people that actually loved God and wanted to follow God. How do they keep following him in the midst of this culture? That's what we're going to look at this morning in Isaiah chapter 8, beginning in verse 11. I'm going to turn to that now, um, and I'm going to be reading out of the New Living Translation. And in verse 11, it records this. The Lord has given me a strong warning not to think like everyone else does. First of all, this is not just a warning. This is a strong warning. Do not think like everyone else does. You are being given the same warning. Don't think like everyone else does. Don't process ever information like everyone else does. But here's the problem. We live among everyone else. 
This is not going to just happen. I I want you to hear that. No matter how determined you are, this is not just going to happen without a serious effort. When I talk about the title there was desire, overcoming desire by desire. What I'm talking about is most often we're led by our feelings. Our feelings are led by our thoughts. And guess what? Where do we get all that stuff? It's often from the people around us. So even if I think a certain way, if I move somewhere and move among a people that lives a a totally different way, eventually, most likely, I will adapt it. Because that's what happened in our culture. I've seen it. Our whole culture thought a totally different way. It is completely different now, just in a short lifetime. I have seen it. Why does it happen? Because most people go along with their feelings. We go along with our feelings. Now, feelings are not bad. Feelings are good. Feelings come from God. It's part of being created in His image. It's part of what separates us from animals. Jesus had feelings. One of the things that that we're going to get to experience in heaven is, is, I think, amazing feelings that, that we've just never experienced before. I don't know if it's true, but when you talk about people who've claimed to have had experiences of going and coming back, that, that's part of what they describe. It's just they, they like can't describe it. But on the other hand, we read in Scripture about people who've gone to the other side away from God when we talk about hell, and it's absolute misery. Okay, it's this this feeling thing. So feelings are not bad. Feelings are good, but we want to probe into them because if we're going to be people that do not think like others, we've got to have a game plan. How am I going to do that? Again, part of it is I want to feed the good desires and I want to block the bad. So I want to bring in good information. I want to do that through the word. I want to do that through gathering with other people. Does that mean I completely shut the world out? No, absolutely not. But seriously, if somebody is speaking untruth over and over and over, I don't want to sit in front of that on repeat. It will affect my mind. So you know what? I guard my mind with news, for instance. And you say, oh, well, well we need to know what's going on. Well, yeah, you do. But, but think about this. We live in a world where billions of people exist. How many news stories are out there? Billions. Can you hear them all? No. Well, what are you going to listen to? Because there's good and there's bad and there's, there's, there's true things and there's, you know, what are you going to listen to? Well, it all depends on the source that you're watching and what their motives are. What do they want to feed into you? I need to control what comes into my heart and mind because it will affect me. It will affect me. It doesn't matter how smart or how tough or, you know, whatever I think I am, it will affect me. So it starts off with a strong warning. Don't think like everyone else does. Then he says this. Don't call everything a conspiracy like they do. And don't live in dread of what frightens them. I tell you what, that really grabs me. Don't, I mean, (laughs) do we not live in the conspiracy age? You know what? When when, uh, I think back to like 2019 and 2020, like this describes me. I was like full of fear. And because of the fear, I was really angry. And and I I saw everything as this conspiracy because I'm living in fear. This is all around us. Strong warning. Don't think like everyone else. How do I get out of that? Well, the way that I get out of that, um, he's going to talk about here. I, I want to... I want to share this and then I want to come back. The way that we get out of it is verse 13. Make the Lord of heaven's armies holy in your life. He is the one that you should fear. He is the one who should make you tremble. He will keep you safe. Here's what I found I was doing. I had taken my... My, my eyes off of the Lord, and I didn't realize. It. I thought they were on the Lord, and I was mad at all this stuff that I saw as going against the Lord. And so I wanted to help correct it, right? And so, you know, you do that by getting on Facebook and saying mean things to people that you disagree with. That's how we change the world. No, absolutely not. 
How, what do we do? We get our eyes on the Lord. Because here's the thing. Go back to this culture. Okay, Forget about ours for a second. Go back to this culture. In that culture, what was happening was, were there conspiracies going on? Absolutely there were conspiracies going on. When you look at conspiracy and what it means to conspire, you know, you're talking about this evil stuff, okay? That was absolutely going on. And we're told in Scripture that the enemy and the kingdom of darkness are always working. We're in a spiritual battle, okay? It's happening. The question is, how do I approach it? Well, the way that I approach it is, I understand that God is in control. And so, in Israel and Judah, they were getting ready to be taken over. And that's part of what Isaiah was speaking to them. You know, for the northern kingdom, it was Assyria. Assyria is coming in, and they're taking you over, and it's because you are turning from the Lord. That, that's why this is going to happen. Now, why is God doing that, though? And he was also speaking to Judah, the southern kingdom, saying, you know, Babylon's going to come in, and you're going to go into exile. Why was God allowing it to happen? He was allowing it to happen in order to turn people back to him. Because they were just comfortable, they weren't really following him, and honestly, they, they needed a jarring so that they would turn back to him. Okay, so what's happening with us right now? What's the future hold? I don't know exactly, but here's the thing. I do not have to fear it. I do not have to fear it because God is in control. Might he put evil people in control? Absolutely. He did it in the Old Testament. But here's the beauty of it. When he does it, he allows the enemy to work, but he is orchestrating his plans in the midst of it. And he's always bringing about that revival that we talked about. Because what happens is we get our eyes off of him. He creates circumstances that force us to get our eyes back on him. Now, we don't have to, though. We can reject him and just get mad, but, but that's not the best solution. The best solution is actually to turn towards him. And even in the midst of the evil stuff that we see, like when they were taken into exile, you know what? God always provided for those who loved him. Now, it doesn't mean they didn't go through hard times, okay? When you look at people like Esther, if you read the book of Esther and Mordecai, you look at people like Daniel, people that followed God, they went through struggles, okay? You're going to go through struggles no matter what. That's, that's part of your life. But in the midst of it, for those who looked to God, He continued to bless them even in the midst of a kingdom that didn't honor Him. I mean, and when it was time to you know, build the temple back, God speaks to kings and so on that don't even follow Him. That's the power of God. So, here's the thing. You do not have to live in fear right now. What happens in the coming years, does it matter? Absolutely. Can you change it? Can you control it? No. What you can control is how you react. That's what you can control. Whether you put your eyes on God, whether you um, walk in the peace and joy that He brings, because in the midst of this, if you genuinely walk in this, people are going to notice. Because they're frazzled. They're absolutely frazzled, and if they see you walking in joy, they're either going to think you're too dumb to know better, or maybe you're, you're, you're on to something. How are you walking in the midst of this? That's what God was doing through Isaiah. He's calling you and I to do the same thing. But it only happens when we stop thinking like everyone else. And you don't just go, okay, from now on I'm not thinking like everyone else. You get a game plan. I'm going to read the Word. I'm going to get quiet before the Lord. I'm going to, you know, we've talked about being busy already. I'm going to cut things out so that I have time with the Lord. I'm going to make that my priority, and then all the other stuff has to come in around it. I'm going to limit how things come into my mind. I mean, for me, for me, I try to spend way more time in God's Word than I do just listening to some news source. I've actually reversed what most people do, and this is just for me. I listen to news sources, and I, I only have certain ones that I go to, about the same amount that most people read the Word, which is very little, you know, like maybe once a week they listen to the preacher, okay? I try to get some he headlines, you know, highlights, if you will, to, to kind of know what's going on. But I don't sit there and just feed, feed, feed. Why? Because I, I'm not able to control it anyway. <laughs> I am able to be a vessel of the Lord when I am... Pouring his words into my heart and mind. I can do that. 
I cannot do the other. But you see what I'm saying? It takes a purposeful effort. It's not going to just happen. You don't just wake up and say, okay, I'm thinking differently from now on. Okay, verse 14. But to Israel and Judah, he will be a stone that makes people stumble. A rock that makes them fall. And for the people of Jerusalem, he will be a trap and a snare. Many will stumble and fall, never to rise again. They will be snared and captured. Here's part of the problem. You had all of these people that were moving against God, and they were the ones in power and in authority, and they seemed to have everything. And there's this tremendous pressure that if you don't go along with them, you are going to suffer consequences. We live in that right now. Here's what you need to know. It won't always be like that. It will not always be like that. I mean, the, the people right now that are rejecting him, they are going to stumble. The question is, will you be with them following the place that they're going? Or will you be in a different place? This time that we live in, it's, it's short. It's short. And so it's so crucial that, that, that you don't just go along with the culture, that you stand against it and you follow the Lord in the midst of it. But again, it's not easy. It's, it's really, really hard. But know this, it will not always be this way. And we've got to, con- like on a daily basis, you've got to remind yourself of that or you're just going to go along with, with what others say. Verse 16. <clears throat> Preserve the teaching of God. Entrust His instructions to those who follow Me. I will wait for the Lord. Who has turned away from the descendants of Jacob? I will put my hope in Him. Preserve the teaching of God. How do we do that? We we speak it out. And we can't speak it out if it's not getting into us. It, 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 again, it's, it's, it's a purposeful effort. And he also talks about how they, you know, he's turned away from Jacob. What's that talking about? Again, he's turned away from that culture. And, and that's what we see in the culture that we live in. He's, he's turned away. But again, we, we get this false teaching from people who say, oh, I, I'm a follower of Jesus too. And they, they had that in this time period. They had people who said, oh, I follow God too, but you know, I, I, I go over here and do this and this, things that clearly go against the Word of God. So we've got to be careful as the culture is speaking into us in the midst of this. Now he goes on, and he says in verse 18, I and the children the Lord has given me serve as signs and warnings to Israel from the Lord of heaven's armies who dwell in his temple on Mount Zion. Someone may say, let's ask the mediums and those who consult the spirits of the dead with their whisperings and mutterings. They will tell us what to do. But shouldn't people ask God for guidance? Shouldn't the living seek guidance Should the living seek guidance from the dead? So now, this is one of these examples where you had people who claim to follow God, but yet they're wanting to go over to these mediums and spirits of the dead. They're doing things that absolutely go against God, and he's saying we're called to be a sign and warnings. Verse 20, look to God's instructions and teachings. People who contradict his word are completely in the dark. People who contradict his word are completely in the dark. So, if I stand before you, and I'm holding a Bible, and I'm speaking things that are completely against what the word really says, I am completely in the dark. It it doesn't matter that I claim to follow God, that I claim to be a pastor. If I'm speaking things, I'm completely in the dark. They will go from one place to another, weary and hungry. And because they are hungry, they will rage and curse their king and their God. They will look up to heaven and down at earth. But wherever they look, there will be trouble and anguish and dark despair. They will be thrown into the darkness. (laughs) 
This is so real. I, I, it's so important that I bring how real this is. You know, one of the things that, that we've seen uh, right here and um, even in, I mean, churches all around this nation, we've seen people, when you go back to the COVID time, when you go back to the COVID time, we had people completely remove themselves from us. And again, this churches all over the nation had this happen. They completely removed themselves from fellowship and so on. And they said, you know, God's leading me to do this, th this kind of thing. Well, once that time was over, you know, after a year, year and a half, whatever, and, and they came back, one of the things that we saw is they thought totally differently. Like their minds had really been changed. And, and I can remember being like, what has happened here? But one of the things that I believe happened is that they isolated themselves from the body. You know, and at first we were all like, oh, we're doing these online services and they're getting everywhere and everybody's watching them. But now that we look at the results of it, a lot of what we see, and I'm not saying God didn't move and God didn't save people. He did, okay? But one of the results of it was is that I believe what people began to do is rather than looking to God and looking to His Word, they begin to listen to other sources as to what they should do and how they should think. And now what we've seen from that is I have seen people who before that and now after, they think totally differently. What happened? What happened was what they began to just continually take into them. And what they began to trust really changed. Why do I say this? Again, because it's a matter of guarding our heart. We are here to, to be a sign and a, and a warning to people. You know, I've, I've mentioned this before, but for instance, when you go back to Germany, okay, when you think about Hitler taking over, much of the church went along with Hitler, okay? They went along with, this is the guy who murdered millions of Jews. He's like, oh, they need to go, and most of the church just let it happened. But there were those who stood up and said this is wrong. And some of them literally lost their lives for it. We are called, because if we don't stand up, if we don't stand up, we're going to get swept into things. And so it's not that we're mean to people, but we continually share truth. And this is so hard. You know why? Because you, like me, have family, friends, co-workers that are completely swept up into things that are totally against God, but yet they would say that they're not. So how do I address that? Well, number one, I've got to be taking in the Word, but I've also got to be led by the Spirit. <clears throat> because in order to speak truth, as God would, I've got to have a boldness, but I've also got to have a love, you know? I mean, it's easy to <laughs> tell somebody they're wrong, okay, when you really don't like them, you know? But when you love somebody, I mean, is that not the hardest thing in the world? Like, when you really love somebody, and they're convinced of something, like, how do you do that? It's hard. You, I mean, you, one or two things, you either want to say it in a moment of rage, or you just want to avoid it. But to, to really go in and just be like, I, I want to share something with you. I, I believe that this is dangerous and it's taking you into a place that is going to lead to destruction. That's not easy. And again, even when it's murder, okay? Because Hitler, he's literally murdering people, but, but part of what was happening was they were trying to convince people that that wasn't happening, okay? And, and we see it in our culture right now. Because we are a culture, okay, that takes the life of the pre-born by the millions. We do that. How, how does that come about? Well, like Hitler, we kind of change the language of stuff and we kind of, you know, dumb it down. I mean, we, we were, use nice words like, you know, abortion. Now, now, you think about that word. What does it mean? It means to abort something. 
So it's kind of like, you know, another way it could be used, you're on a mission and you abort the mission. You just stop, you know? I mean, it sounds good. But what is really happening is, is there is life and we decide to take it. Now, just like Hitler, Hitler would take people away from others so they couldn't see it, okay? They take them away so you're not stunned by it. Because if you were to see what Hitler was doing, then they would rise up and they would be, you know, crazy. But that's part of what happens in our culture. We, we mask it so that we don't see it. I, I mean, you know, people um, don't like us showing images of the child inside because it's shocking, okay? Or when you look at how their life is taken. I mean, sometimes they're stabbed, cut up, burnt with chemicals. I mean, there's all kinds of ways, and it's, it's shocking. But this is where we can be led into. And, and here, we live in a time now where we're told that is love. That is loving women, for instance. No, it's not. It's hurting their hearts. It's hurting their hearts so bad. So we don't want to come and attack and hurt people, but we want to say to you, listen, God is love. God loves you. God also loves this child growing in you, and he wants to provide. And you're scared. You're scared of how to provide and what it's going to look like and whatever. That's actually a good place to be. That's when you get on your knees before the Lord and you see God provide. But you know what? That makes total sense, but it is hard to say in this culture. Because it's, mmm, the fire is, is, is going to come down. But it's so important that we walk in love and we simply speak truth. How does that happen? Well, as he said in the beginning, we can't think like other people. Okay? Well, again, our, mo most of our thoughts and what we think and so on, it's all formed from what's coming into us. We want to start with the Word of God, okay? Uh, and then we all to measure other things that we know are untruth. It's not that we block everything out and we don't want to hear any kind of argument, you know? That always frustrated me. I, I come out of Mormonism, and that's one of the things that they were taught. It's like, okay, don't talk to anybody who disagrees with you, okay? Why? <laughs> so that, you know, you don't get things exposed. That's not what I'm saying. We want to be open. We want to listen to people. But when I know something and I've gone through it and it's like, I know it's right, I don't want to sit there and just constantly let it come in, let it come in. I, I want to instead bring in truth. God's called us to be signs in this time. Just as Isaiah, our life, your life, it's important. But if you're going to live out that calling, you've got to overcome the desires that are going to come out of you just to please people. The only way to do that is for your desire to love the Lord to be greater. And at that time, you're still going to love people, but you're not just seeking to please them. You're seeking to love them, which sometimes means telling them things that initially, maybe they, they don't want to hear because they, they'd rather just go along on the path that they're on. That's not what we're called to. We're called to be different. Father, thank you um, for truth.